Beautiful day. Great taste in water. What shall we do? Pardon my one-handed uh, little cap screwing technique. You know, I've been thinking here recently. I hope I'm not alone on this. Let me go ahead and set my water bottle down right quick. But, I've been thinking recently. You know, I kind of wonder how people got things done back in the day. Like, say, uh, 150 years ago, roughly, if my math is correct. Things had to be interesting back then. I mean, you know, technology wasn't near as advanced. Um, like, say, the only cars that we had back in about the 1850s was like, oh, I don't know, horse and carriage, maybe the first sign of automobiles. Like, say, the later Model A. In approximately 1911, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody please correct me on that. Because my history on that is getting a little rough. Well. Today. I kind of hope to figure things out. And for this, we're going to need some ears. And we're going to need some eyes. And pardon me if I look a little dorky. These are the only safety glasses I could find. Oh, well, since I conveniently misplaced my others. And why do we need eyes and ears for this? You gotta learn something today, boys. Got an 1851 Pieta 44 oh, Pieta 44 caliber black powder takes percussion caps and of course black powder 44 caliber lead balls. We're going to take a little bit of history session today. Now, I'm sure y'all have already noted that I've got a target out there. And a steel plate. Hope y'all can see it as clearly as I can. From where I'm standing here by my truck, it's so oh, I don't know, 10, 15 yards roughly. Let me scoot y'all back to also get me in frame here. Set down my right hand pal on my hood. Let's see what we can hit today. Make sure y'all are still looking in the right spot. Cool. Let's punch a little paper, shall we? What y'all say? Looks like my aim's a little off. Tell I need oil this thing. What you say we try to put a cup on steel? I hope I hit him. Well, at least hit that plate. This is actually only my third time shooting this little doll and actually I've only put a total of about oh six twelve about a dozen and a half rounds through it so far 
I just recently snagged this thing. Had a pretty good deal on my favorite gun side academy. Not trying to promote them or anything, but they do have some great deals from time to time. What you say we get this little gal loaded back out? But so far, what I've shot of her, she ain't a bad little gal. Um, got a single action trigger, or hammer. Um, I'm running some number 10 percussion caps. Planning on trying some number 11s because I'm not sure exactly what she likes just yet. And they recommend a 12 to 15 grain powder charge. And if I remember right, a .454 ball. But I'm running some Hodgdon Pirate X 30, yeah, 30 grain equivalent pellets, and they seem to do all right. With these .35 diameter, 44 cal, 124 grain balls. She got a little bit of a kick, but still pretty manageable. A guy with skinny arm, oh, skinny wrist and broken thumb like me can handle it. I'm sure most anybody could. That was sarcasm, by the way. But... So far, the few times that I have shot this little guy, seems to be running all right. Um, like I say, I haven't had a whole lot of time to actually study my accuracy with it. I seem to be hitting a little low, most usually. Kind of difficult for a disabled guy to work and I'm trying to practice a little bit of gun safety here yeah I found this guy on Academy for I want to say like 250 260 somewhere in that ballpark um, found them on a few other websites, but these guys typically run, <clears throat> they typically run in the ballpark of 250 to about $300 for these 44s, and they, oh, uh, Pieta also makes a 36 caliber, either a 31 or a 36 caliber possibly both for a couple of bucks less oh less rather sorry about my poor grammar after all I am a redneck but I wanted 44 because I like I'm well you know I am after all I am the go big or go home type I'm kind of into wrist breakers. Here and now I should be done reloading this thing. Yeah, this is the 1851 Old Navy 44. Got a seven and three eighths inch barrel length six shooter. They recommend twelve to fifteen grain of triple F um, powder. Thirty grain being the absolute maximum, which is what I'm running right now. And one thing that I want to note with these revolvers, you want to make sure you get your load 
packed about as tight as you can get it down in there. Oh. Even if you are running these pellets instead of powder. Because I've noticed if you don't get your load packed in there good enough, she don't like to fire. You'll just sit there and blow off your caps. And that's about it. I'm using just some unlubricated wads, oh, patches here. They recommend lubing them up. And go ahead and make all the innuendos you would like. That's your job, not mine. And please don't let my mouth get in the way of that. Yeah, the last, well, first and last two times, I guess you'd say, that I took this thing out, I failed to get one of the chambers packed down good, and about two or three percussion caps later, I finally realized my mistake, well, my mistake, and the last time, I made myself feel like a dork in front of one of my co-workers and some of his buddies, but it's okay. Nothing out of the ordinary. And it's like they warn you in the booklet on these things. In a six shot, especially if you're going to be carrying it, it's advised that you only load five cylinders, well, five chambers, rather. Look at me in my poor English. Because if you load all six, all it takes is for one slight bump of that hammer and your percussion cap is going off leading to an accidental discharge but shall we try to find a couple more of my targets here to blast I don't know how easy it is for y'all to see and sorry for my one man band attempt here but what I've got down there is a couple of bottles that uh, helium tank that I borrowed and a little water pump that I kind of stole out of my uh, junk pile over to the left of y'all's screen. Let me grab Barney. And what you say we blast that healing tank? About a two liter. Hopefully. Well, if I aim a little lower into the left, maybe. There we go. Dang it, gotta reload again. I've noticed, especially at further distances, I have a tendency to. Aim a little too low, 
And up close, I have a tendency to aim high and right. Kind of odd, I know, but... Yeah, so far, I've yet to find any complaints about this little gun. Working that single action trigger gets a little tiring after a point, but no complaints. If the military can do it, us civilians can do it. Get down in there. Uh, gonna be fun cleaning this dirty little gal tonight. It's really not that hard, but it's just tedious. As I like to say, a good gun is a clean gun. Keep it clean and she'll last a lifetime. It's something that y'all really want to make sure of too. Since you are working with powder and lead, um, Either like wear a pair of like latex gloves or make sure you wash your hands good after you get done. This stuff really ain't that great for you to breathe. But, you know, not everybody has a gas mask. And then you get some poor redneck like me that only spends money on guns and ammo and not any uh, face mask or nothing. Us rednecks like to take chances. Just imagine how long this would be taking me if I actually had to measure out powder and dump it in each chamber instead of reaching down and picking up a pellet. That's why I like using the pelletized powder. All you gotta do is grab and drop it in the chamber. I've also got a 50 cal rifle that as soon as I get <coughs> some more ammo, well, mainly powder for it, that'll be my next video, probably. Do a back in black part two. What y'all say? Oh, let's see, that's three down. This one and one more to go. And you see the way I usually load one of these guys? I make sure to put the cap on the nipple first and then start working on the powder and ball. Whoops. But I like putting the cap on first it's where I definitely know exactly how many I've done. I find oh, I personally find it easier looking for that bright, shiny, copper-colored cap than going through and looking down the chambers. That way you can turn it away from yourself instead of keeping it pointed toward yourself. But if you shoot one of these enough, you'll find what's easiest for you. <laughs> Clean enough.
And arguably the hardest part about loading one of these is holding on to the caps. Because they are pretty small. I mean, just check it out. That's how big the percussion cap is. Tiny. Fixing to have this last chamber loaded up. As soon as I pack my wad, on my load. Um, they actually do have special wads to use, but I mean, the way I see it, each to their own. Everybody tends to find what works best for them. Like me, I'm just using standard patches and they seem to get the trick done. As long as you get everything packed in good enough. Which, I kind of got one cockeyed here, so... Try to poke it down enough to clear the... Barrel. Ended up messing it right then, so I wasn't able to get it packed a little better. And after you've already got each chamber loaded, I typically f prefer to go through and just give them a little touch more of an ump. Give them an extra ugga dugga to make sure they're in there good. Because let me tell you something, boys. It is a little terrifying thinking that, oh, expecting your gun to go off, and it doesn't. And then you're stuck trying to sort through all the possibilities. And then you finally repack your load, and it goes off, and you feel like a moron. I'm gonna have to get some actual wads for this. Cause these patches don't seem to like me very much. Trim off that excess best I can and go from there. All right, let's get back to the show. I am going to get one down in that tank down there. One way or another. How about that water pump down there? Hopefully y'all can see it. Here, let me hop on this other side.
concussion cap stuck. Had a cap stick up and under the hammer and prevented me from catching this one cap. Out of all those shots, I don't think I managed to hit that sucker. That's lame. But I am trying to do this one handed because my thumb is still sore. Let's go ahead and load up a couple more chambers here. Because I do still have a couple more targets I want to try to hit. That's the only thing that I hate about these little caps. Um, these number 10s anyway seem to kind of explode in there. I'm not real sure if that's exactly how they're supposed to work. But without actually having anything to like go around them or nothing. And since they do have a small powder charge in them I imagine it's like shooting a bullet outside of the chamber. Like you set a bullet out on a T-post or something. It'll just explode because it doesn't have a chamber wrapped around it to prevent it from just exploding. And I'm sure that's how these percussion caps seem to work. Go ahead and skip the chamber there, I guess. Then again, I'm new to black powder. Well, I'm fairly new to black powder. Um, powder blah, blah, blah. Black powder, period. I'm just starting to learn the ins and outs of it because I've always been a cartridge firearm guy myself. This only makes my second black powder. There's just something so interesting about shooting black powder. Especially black powder rifles, and especially with hunting. You've only got one shot to do it right. So there's an added thrill to it. Because if you don't make it right that first time, you may or may not get another chance. And that's where the side iron, a well, side iron comes into play. You get a couple extra shots. It also takes you a couple extra hours to reload. As soon as I get this ball in, I've only got one more chamber to load. No, no, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Hmm, you went and done it. Tried dropping this ball in there without a patch. You don't want your balls to get deformed. Oh, the internet is going to love me for this 
All these innuendos. You dirty minded perverts. Your parents would be ashamed of you if they knew how sick minded you are. Just kidding. I love y'all. Don't take it personally. You're my second fam. Come on, get in there. That's what she said. Finally get packed good. Now number five. Even if I'm not gonna be carrying one of these, I still prefer to go ahead and only load up five shots. Just to be safe, I guess. Just wish the sun was shining a little bit. Only thing that'd make today any better. <sighs> All right, should be good to go. Now, what do y'all say we shoot? Let's see. Set Barney down so that I can get y'all centered on a target here. What y'all should be able to see is at the bottom of the screen, about the middle, is a little black dot. And then up in that little yearling tree, a little white dot. Those are two old, old chew cans that I found laying around. Let's see if I can smoke one. Standing just to y'all's left here. I know you can't see me, but... <coughs> oh, that powder stinks. Taste funny. Shot just to the left of that little black one. Let's see what I can do out there a little further. See if I can hold steady enough. It. I haven't had enough practice for that just yet. Help! How about we try to put some on steel? Try to get these last two on that steel plate, AR500. Just like that. Finally got myself steady. Now, 
I'm going to give my wrist a little bit of a break here. But really, I don't have a whole lot that I can complain about with this little thing. It's about as accurate as you are. Takedown is extremely simple. Got a little pen right here in front of the chamber. Oh, well, in front of the cylinder, rather. Pardon me. And a little clip on it on the back side. I hope you can see. Just depress that little clip. And it simply pushes out of there. And you do not want to lose that clip. And then the barrel. In a perfect world. Will slide right on out. I'd say she's dirty. Oh. The step that I always forget. You're supposed to have it on half cock. And then again in a perfect world. I forgot to clean this thing the last time that I shot it. So there's even more residue gumming it up. And then the cylinder ought to slide right on off. Beautiful world of black powder. Just think, this used to be just shiny as can be. That's the joys of black powder, though. They get dirty quick. And then just slide your cylinder back on. Slide your barrel back in place. And you do have... Let me back it back off a little bit. You do have a couple of pins that line up with holes in the bottom of the barrel down here focus but you gotta slide it into I'll slide those pins into them holes and then take your pen again back into its home yeah I'll check oh, that thumb is still sore let me switch hands here whoops Make sure that barrel is seated good. And then slide your pen in, and you're good to go. This thing is so gummed up. Needs oiled again, too. Um, another complaint that I've seen in the reviews on these guns is that uh, as soon as they, as soon as the purchasers bought them, they had to go through and tighten all of these screws up because they were loose. And I found a couple on this one that just needed like a little bit of a tweak to it, but nothing major. I've yet to have very many problems out of this thing, except for the fact that it likes to kind of gum up after shooting it enough. Cleaning's a breeze. Like I say, it's about as accurate as you are. As long as you can hold it on target, that's where that ball is going to be. Let's go down there and check our targets. As soon as I can get my camera off the tripod. That two liter. Blew it up nicely. 
I thought I seen where I just trimmed the top on this water pump, but oh well. It lives for another video. It's going to die. I can promise it that. Now, ended up hitting the top of this tank. As you can see, put a nice dent in it. I'm sure you can see that it wasn't there before. I don't see an exit hole, so it's probably somewhere in there still. Somewhere. Also gets live to see a couple more shots. Come up here to our paper. There's one shot where I hit pretty low. And at least one shot right there. Let's check out our steel. I need to ditch this thing soon. Uh, I would like to say I hit right there. Because I don't recall that spot being there before. That feels a little deeper than the 22 that I was shooting it with. Now, there's a sapling there. But, I think I'll about near wrap this video up. Wrap my first series, on well, my first video in a series to come of back in black powder. So, before I take up too much more of y'all's time, I think... I'm going to send my farewells. You ever want to get into black powder pistols? I absolutely love this thing. You have up to six shots to do it, right? Beautiful little gun. Pieta brand 44 cal black powder. I don't know if I can get it to focus or not, but check out the engraving on this thing. It's beautiful. Got like some ships, sailing engraved on the cylinder. I hope y'all can see it as well as I can. Got a pretty smooth action, typically. Engraving back on the brass and the grip by the hammer. Got some pretty deep, well, pretty deep grooves in the hammer there. Um, there's a brand if y'all actually want to read it. Made in Italy. Black powder only. 44 cal. Um, and actually, so where y'all can see the sight picture, got a little groove there in the hammer, and a bead front side, and yes, this thing is unloaded. Y'all did see me unload it. But, there's roughly what you see when you're looking down the barrel on this thing. It's a little difficult for me personally. Um, I'm used to modern revolvers. Well, modern anything really. Where you have... Where you have bigger grooves in your rear sights typically deeper grooves um, typically a taller front post but I really don't have many complaints for this thing beautiful little gun can get them through Academy, Cabela's, Bud's Guns you can get them through just about 
any place that handles guns. Like I say, I ended up snagging that one through Academy. Like, tax, shipping, everything, it was less than, well, just shy of $300. Um, the last time I checked, Academy had them for about 260 I think. They're like 280 at Cabela's the last time I checked. So they're not terribly priced. I think I seen some on um, Bud's Gun Shop that were in, oh, that were also in the two, three hundred dollar range. So they're not terribly priced um, to get a piece of history. Like I say, it's an 1851 Old Navy. I mean, how historic can you get, really? Dragonovs, 1911s, the true 1911s. The FALs, the originals. Um, let's see, what were some more? PPSHs. Let's see. The Hawkins Black Powder... Um, rifles just another piece of history that's also fun to shoot I love it also managed to pick me up one little uh, holster for it that I personally like it's not going to be for everybody I can tell you that but it suits me. Hopefully you all can see that good. I personally like it. Only hard part with it, you gotta squeeze it to ever get the cylinder to clear. Because this thing's a little bulky and the holster is still new. And the thing that I like about this, it works through the belt loops. And you can also use it as inside the waistband. It'll just clip on. Unless you're an incompetent shrew like me that can't work with himself. Anyway, you guys get the drift. Screw it. I ain't gonna waste no more of y'all's time. You gotta pick yourself up on these. Fun to shoot, piece of history. It's not a cult, but... You know. <laughs> There's other good brands besides cult out there. I really don't have much else to say. Other than this is Redneck and I am signing off. Peace.